Hello and welcome back to another episode of Octo Reacts featuring everyone's least favourite radioactive octopus, me, the disgruntled octopus. Hello, how are you going? And today we're actually doing a um, reaction video on Zach Drios. Oh, <laughs> hopefully I haven't butchered that name because that's how Google tells me to uh, pronounce it. Uh, so apologies in advance to all our Spanish viewers out there if I have butchered that. However, before we get into the video today, I would absolutely love for you to put in the comment section below if you're a part-time or full-time reseller, because I'm actually doing a bit of a nefarious data collection project. I'm going to do a little bell curve and actually work out uh, how people actually fit into the community, all those different things. Don't worry, I'm not going to attribute your name or your username against the data. Just quite curious to see what the breakdown is and um, see see what data collection purposes I can use, just, just to give you a bit of an idea of what our audience is uh, um, and how we're sitting in that regard. But today we're going to do a, um, a reaction video to Zach. He released a video a couple of days ago regarding five reasons why you shouldn't be a full-time reseller in 2024. Um, he did a video a couple of weeks ago about um, what reselling YouTubers are telling you, and <laughs> it got a bit of traction. No, he do say he, it's... I think he's a bit pleased with himself by looks at the face there. But yeah, so a little bit of traction. I had a lot of people reach out to me wanting to do a reaction video on that one. Didn't want to do it, not necessarily because of the content, just more or less. Um, <laughs> I didn't want any more people chasing me with a stick. So without further ado, we'll press that play button. Let's go. Views or sales or whatever. But a lot of people did agree that it is more difficult reselling now. And I have also seen other YouTubers talking about why you should start reselling in 2024. I mean, a lot of those videos get a good amount of views because again they're very popular they're very yeah and um, granny and i have spoken about this before is that we try and be more realistic and more down to earth and you know reselling does have you know it's it's pros and it's also got its cons and we we find a lot of people out there don't talk about the cons you know because like what zach was just saying there is the more popular videos you know like thrift hauls and you know i'm going to sell this thing you know for x amount of dollars and this is what i paid for it like picking videos per se that they do actually better um however I'd be a disservice um, <laughs> to the community if I just, you know, punched out all this, um, all this guff saying everything's roses and you know sunshine and all those different things. And I wouldn't be the disgruntled octopus, the you know the one that you you love to loathe. So everyone needs a villain. So <laughs> he's the reselling villain here. Um, but yeah, I'd be quite curious. You know, do you find reselling a lot harder now? I, I'm finding that even where I am, and I have said previously, the thrift store prices. Um, have pretty much been stagnated but you know recently i have found that they're starting to creep up there as well uh personally i'm moving out of clothing i know that goes against the grain <laughs> in a lot of spaces uh, however yeah like i said i don't enjoy it uh, i'm trying to build a bigger brand for my ebay store i had a lovely chat with chris furlong yesterday um gave him a bit of an idea of what the future holds for the octopus but from my perspective uh if you want to make money like you know without not that i recommend it but if you got no money and you don't want to have, you know, your space chewed up by reselling, probably drop shipping. As much as I hate to say it, <laughs> not that I condone it, because like I said before, it goes against eBay's policies. But I do think drop shipping will probably um, be the best entry point, uh, especially if you're selling uh, consumables and replenishables and all those different things, because drop shipping works of variation, not variation listings. Um, multi quantity listing so if you've got more than one product you can actually keep selling it once you sell it more often uh you get more sales through you get higher in the algorithm all those different things it is quite cutthroat like reselling you know it's no different to that um however like i said that i'll probably do a video in a couple of weeks because a lot of people have asked on the back of my drop shipping video that i did a couple of weeks ago that they'd like to see more of an in-depth one so if you do want to see that as well just put your your comment down the section below just put drop ship or something along that just to give me an indication of what you want to do and yeah you don't have to pay for it it's basically i'm just going to walk you through it <laughs> give you a bit of an idea of how to do it um i'd probably if you know if you're looking down that path start looking for very obscure products that probably the market would need um, a lot of your replenishable products like i said previously in the video i used to sell candles and all these different things and make three or four dollars a pop yeah not phenomenal but when you're selling 10 15 candles a day um, you're not holding the stock someone else is doing it for you yeah it, it does add up so and you can do it from the comfort of your home as well so like i said once again don't really endorse it <laughs> i don't do it myself anymore but you know like i said there's a few people out there that are struggling and it might be the best option for them so very positive so it makes it seem like everybody could do it and they really can but for a lot of the big reasons 
Yeah, I, I kind of disagree with Zach there. I don't think everyone can do reselling. <laughs> I've been trawling in the Facebook groups a little bit lately. Um, you know, but people are lovely. You know, I don't think they mean ill will or all these different things, but they're quite um, stubborn, I suppose. You, you know, you try and tell them what the way to do it or a correct way of doing things, and they'll just argue with you and then delete the post. Yeah, you know? so there's there's no point. <laughs> you can't get through to everyone. So, sellers, that's a full time gig. And I wanted to make a video talking about why you should not be a full time reseller in 2024. I'm not talking about part time stuff. We'll save that to the end of the video. But if you've seen any now, I'd like to be able to do the hard goods stuff. But at least in my area, there's just no hard goods. It's all. So the hard goods is, you know, for those that don't know, um, it's like furniture and all those different things. You know, your Facebook marketplace, your Craigslist, uh, your Gumtree and all those different things. You just, you know, buy furniture, pick it up, then flip it. Or you, you might even get it for free if, you, if you're that way inclined. If you've got a, a, you know, a van or something inclined to that. It's probably a young man's game um, or a young octopus's game. So, you know, that, that's another revenue. But, but like, you know, I, I suppose like Zach, I, I was probably full time for the best part of two, three years. Um, recently gone back to full-time work and doing eBay probably slightly more than part-time at the moment. Like, like I said, I'm trying to, you know, streamline my uh, my eBay store and then I've gone back to full-time work to yeah, to remove the, the junk, I per se. And that junk encompasses clothing, which I don't really enjoy. <laughs> but hey, each to your own, if, you, if you'd like doing clothing, yeah, put down in the comment section below because oh, I can't stand it. All closed. So this is my full-time gig and it is very difficult, especially getting into hard times now with another recession or just inflation, cost of living, just soaring, getting worse and worse by the month. There's going to be more people wanting to do stuff on their own and make more money and that turns into a lot of reselling. And then also... And, and you will find that, you know, a lot of people get into the reselling space because they watch YouTube videos, a lot of um, media outlets such as, you know, television, uh, newspapers, you know, news websites and all these different things. You know, they basically put, you know, reselling on a pedestal. They put thrifting on a pedestal uh, quite recently here in Canberra. Um, they'll basically propping up a local, you know, thrift store or an op shop. Uh, Vinny's basically saying that they're, you know, doing... Uh, like high-end clothing on the fashion fashion week and all these different things, which is, isn't really helping, um, you know, I suppose full-time resellers and especially, you know, if they're trying to get things as cheap as possible. Uh, like I said before, I have no problem paying up if I could turn a profit on these things. I don't expect things for free. However, you know, um, these news websites are artificially increasing the market and making it more and more problematic for, you know, for people that do this for their full-time income has an avenue to go full-time. I'm not saying everybody who will try to go full-time will fail. I just wanted to tell you guys some of my experiences and my issues doing it for a living because most of the time it's not shown on YouTube too much. They just show hauls, sales, you know, thrifting videos. And the first one is is clearly the most obvious, but still needs to be said, most likely you will not make enough money. We 100 percent and that, that's the reason why i went back to work for us because um like i said previously i was over a hundred thousand dollars a year i'm back in a hundred thousand dollars well probably close to 120 US, uh, australian now um however when i was reselling you know, it was quite comparable and yeah he does mention previously a bit later as well is that you don't get superannuation uh you don't get your you know your all those different benefits and all those different things you need to take into consideration when you're a full-time income. You talk about what part of the country you live in and if it's good or bad inventory, but not only with the variability of finding good things like well, I mean, you could have a really good day, good week, good month, and then have a really bad day, week, month, or even several months where you're just not finding good stuff. So it still is all up to chance, but with in yeah, and I think chance comes a lot into it as well. I think it definitely, definitely, definitely revolves around the area that you're sourcing. And, and yeah, like the internet now has made it opportunistic to, you know, go further afield. You know, on Facebook Marketplace, for example, you can message people in different states and you have the item shipped to you. But then you're, you're also opening yourself up to scams, the quality of the product. You're not actually able to, you know, have it in your hands or your tentacles at the time when you're actually purchasing it. Uh, thrift stores, you know, obviously moving to an online domain where they're actually selling the products themselves or they're actually pricing it off eBay prices. So it is going to become more complicated and we are seeing it more and more now. I don't think it's going to revert anytime soon um, as much as <laughs> that's, you know, I, I have said in the previously that I don't think thrift stores should be pricing things off eBay. They should be making it more affordable for across the boat. Um, I know a lot of people probably can test that. However, it just comes down to market traffic and advertising. You know, we're paying you know, possibly up to 20, 25% in fees on eBay, depending if you're a promoter otherwise. Um, yeah, and then obviously on the flip side, they've got you know, brick and mortar stores and they're paying rent and all these different things, but they may have maybe you know, 
depending on the location, maybe 500 people a day maximum of foot traffic coming through the store, whilst you know, comparable on eBay, you've got maybe 100 million people going at any potential time. Inflation constantly going up, cost of living going up. Even if you make the same amount of money every month, it literally gets you less and less every month. So you just need to keep rising over and over again. And that's just not realistic. That's why you see so many reseller YouTubers. I mean, even myself, they're not only a full-time reseller. They also make YouTube videos about it. They have a podcast. They have a Discord group. They have live stream Q&As. They have live stream thrift. Sounds like Grumpy Granny. She's the only YouTube reselling the person that I know that has a podcast, Discord group, live streams, and live thrifts as well. <laughs> but in honesty, and I said it before, and I'm probably going to have a lot of the cult members following me around chasing me with sticks, is that do not pay for any online courses revolving around reselling or drop shipping for that matter. Um, basically, it's a skill set. So realistically, it comes down to those, you know, that, and I kind of disagree with this, you know, if you, if you don't know how to do it, you kind of teach what that saying says, is that people use it as an income stream. And realistically, if I'm going to be brutally honest, if I was, you know, <laughs> I won't say have a lack of morals, but if I was going to, you know, have a business venture, the best way I would recommend if you want to get into the reselling space, sell to resellers, um, you know, I won't say that they're gullible. However, you know, basically there is a market there and it's quite expendable. So, you know, if you do some digging and you can find some people around quite a lot of money per month because they're selling a product to resellers that they not necessarily need. With me's, they have the yard sale videos. Some of them have Facebook groups as well. I mean, sponsors for the videos, all of these different things. Hmm, Patreon. Maybe I should get into that. Oh. Things to add more income. And I'm not saying that any of these things are bad. Is that really what you want to do? I don't mind making YouTube videos. Obviously, I've been doing it since 2010. I just... So I, I suppose from my perspective, right? Like, <laughs> I don't clear $100 a, a, a month on, e on YouTube. So, you know, we're not really raking in the money from a YouTube perspective. Um, however... Yeah, realistically, I quite enjoy it. Like, like I said before, I quite enjoy the community aspect. I, I speak to a lot of the, the US viewers uh, quite frequently on Instagram, and I just love the interaction. So, yeah, that's what I probably do it for. And, yeah, just to help people out, you know, that you might <laughs> think one way or another, you know, about me, and that's your own prerogative. I've got no issues with that. But, yeah, what I will be said is that, you know, I'm genuinely trying to help people for, you know, <laughs> for free. And, yeah, at any point of time, you're okay you're more than welcome to reach out to me and ask me a question. Um, so like I said, that more than happy for you to do that. Like it, but not every reseller wants to be on camera and do live streams and do podcasts and all of these different things. Like some people just want to buy and sell things on eBay or whatever platform you choose. The second reason is increased competition, which I got into a little bit in my previous videos. Adding on to the inflation, people making the same amount of money or less money as cost of goods are going up. More people are gonna need another part part-time job, a side hustle, just to be able to make the same amount of money they did a few years ago. And this is what I actually think the future is going to hold, right? So, you know, prediction to the octopus, you know, you <laughs> come back in five years time and see if I'm correct. But I think that more than one job, you know, and it's not too common in Australia, to my knowledge yet, is that it's going to be the, the norm. Uh, so back, probably back in the 80s when I was growing up, uh, my mum was a stay-at-home mum. My dad was a full-time worker. Like I said before, that's just the way it was back then. Um, we've seen that paradigm shift that both parents or both, you know, both partners have to go work just to, you know, maintain a household income now. And I think it's going to get to the point probably in the next 10, 15, 20 years is that not only will you have your primary full-time income, um, you'll also have to, you know, sort, seek a secondary position or a secondary job. Um, so that's why I suppose that I'm creating this little series that I'm doing as well is that, the hopes that, you know, like, like I said, that people probably, you know, you're better off to getting in front of the curve. You know, all these different people, um, you know, like I said, you create your business now because that's the way you want to do it. Um, yeah, so like I said, I think that's going to become the norm in the next 10 to 15 years. I hope it doesn't. Um, but like I said, they'd be quite curious to see how that goes because wage growth won't keep up with the rising cost of living. Um, so like I said, that realistically if i was in um this situation if i was i suppose a younger octopus in that respect uh, i'd be definitely looking for as many side hustles as i can for passive incomes or you know or multiple streams of income just to to get ahead of the, the eight ball oh and that turns into finding out you can resell stuff online which brings more people into goodwills getting you know an item here item there but if there's several people that add on to your normal like goodwill route if you're a full-time reseller that and what Zach's forgotten to mention there as well is that resellers by nature are quite thrifty in the sense that, you know, they're quite cheap, I suppose. <laughs> I can't think of a better word to put it, but 
when when more of the population goes into th reselling or, or thrifting all these different things just to you know, get that little bit of extra income a month and all these different things the price of goods are going to plummet because what i could potentially sell a skylander to for zach for example for a hundred dollars if he starts selling skylanders as well he's probably going to want to say hey i'm going to buy skylanders at five dollars i'm not paying a hundred dollars anymore so then that market crashes because <laughs> every man of their dogs a reseller um and they're no longer purchasing at the yeah you know, at the market price that's so setting that new market bench level still cuts into your margins and adds more competition even if they're not like a hardcore you know grinding it out for eight hours a day kind of reseller and we are definitely going to see that more in the next few years it doesn't seem like the economy is going to be doing too well so there's nothing that you could really do about it now for the next reason we're primarily talking about stores i mean yard sales you could always find good deals or bad deals it's just either haggling with the person or they're just getting rid of their stuff instead of throwing it out it'll be really cheap whatever but if you go to thrift stores goodwills at least in my area they up the price of all of the items every six months so my area is actually yeah and that's what i mentioned a bit earlier is that the prices in thrift stores are increasing exponentially um where i used to get you know seven or eight dollar jeans levi jeans um i'm now finding they're closer to 10 to 12 dollars which in itself is not bad because like i said i've been to other areas with it you're 25 30 dollars they're actually priced higher than ebay um however you know if you are in those certain areas it's going to become more problematic so like i was saying before is that another thing and i don't know i can't remember if zach mentions it further along is that reselling cyclic right so the way that ebay works is you know a lot of people talk about you, know, you have to list daily you have to keep pumping you know feeding the machine feeding the beast kind of thing but realistically there's no break cycle for that <laughs> so it'll eventually get to the point where you know, you're gonna have to liquidate your stock because you want to get out of the market or you want to move on to something else i, I personally think that reselling is a fantastic opportunity to build uh, into other areas so like you know um you know other people like such as tech and sports and all these different things used his ebay platform to build into other business ventures that he's moved on to which is fantastic and that's what i recommend everyone does you know i get a little bit <laughs> a little angry when when i hear resellers especially on youtube that say that they love it and they're going to do it until the day they die and all these different things and as what zach says a little bit later is that once you hit 80 <laughs> you're not going to be competitive enough so but i, I personally think that reselling in its current you know, craze, I suppose, for lack of a better term, is probably going to be over the next two to three years. Um, it's no longer going to be profitable. People aren't going to be able to pay the prices that resellers command. Um, this is for a majority of the products, right? There will always be outliers. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, collectible items or things that you can't readily get available. However, like I said before, is that my personal preference in take with a grain of salt, like I said before, don't, you know, trust everything a reselling YouTuber tells you. But, you know, I'd be looking into alternative business ventures, like maybe drop shipping, you know, even though it's against eBay's policy. However, you know, what we've seen previously on my community page and also the video I did previously, there's 100,000 dropshippers in Australia. Um, eBay doesn't seem to, to mind as long as you, you know, tow the party line per se. So, like I said, there, there's always that to, to look into. There's other business ventures that, you know, possibly Shopify and all these different things you can look in. And obviously have their pros and cons. But, yeah, like I said, you just have to be mindful and always look one step ahead because obviously if it's already people are talking about it, it's already the opportunity window is closed, I, I suppose, from my perspective. Pretty cheap compared to the rest of the country, honestly. Shirts are $4, jeans are $4, sweaters are $5. A lot of the basic shoes are $4. They could be priced up, you know, if they're a nice pair of shoes. But I think before I moved here, they were even cheaper. Even if it only goes up by like a quarter or even like 20 cents, within two and a half years, everything is a dollar more. And that might not seem too bad, but most fashion ends up going on a decline for how popular it is. So if a certain brand is really popular right now in a year it'll probably get a little less popular which means either less sales or the price of the items that you could sell go down as the price you could buy them at at goodwill slowly keep going up so yeah and i agree 100 percent with what he said then is i used to collect oh not collect but i used to sell um dixon flannel shirts and they would literally as soon as i get them they would fly at the door um i used to do a little bit of ebay re uh, retail arbitrage so i'd buy them um, from Dixon because uh, they'd be like limited edition shirts uh, that sell out in the States very quickly. So I'd, <laughs> I'd buy them from Dixon in Australia, list them on eBay um, and then sell them at the price of two shirts. So for every two shirts, so every shirt that I sold, I could buy two shirts and just rinse and recycle and rinse and repeat. And that was working quite well for a while. Um, and I think it's quite important, you know, especially what you're saying here with, you know, keeping an eye on market trends and all these different things is that I'm not particularly a savvy octopus, you know, <laughs> in, when it comes to fashion, but 
um, you know, if you are delving into one particular market, well, I'll just use decks and flannels, for example, jump onto Facebook pages, jump onto Reddit posts and all these different things that are dedicated to those particular items because your margins are just going to dwindle. And that also brings me to my next point. I guess maybe adaptability is the word, but just constantly changing and updating your sourcing from all different areas will have to be like a consistent learning lesson as you're trying to resell full time. You're probably not going to just be able to go into Goodwill for the next four years your local goodwill and make a full-time living off of it you're gonna have to keep changing like in my area i've tried to go to yard sales a couple times early in the morning on the weekends and it is brutal all the yard sales started at about eight o'clock if you get there at eight o'clock all the good stuff is gone you have to get there before it opens. And even if it's a community yard sale and there's a ton of houses, you basically only have, I don't know, two or three houses that you could kind of go very quickly and try to get all the good deals as fast as possible by, and within like an hour, everything is dried up. There's just, way too much competition in my area. So that makes it very difficult for me. On top of that, even though my Goodwills have pretty good pricing, it's just a known yeah, and I think further to that as well, what with sourcing, um, you've actually got to store the stock, right? So realistically, if you buy 10 items, listen on eBay, all 10 items, unless they're, you know, gold ticket, you know, high price or underpriced items, they're not going to sell them. It's pretty much, yeah, a lead time or a sell through rate that comes into those. So, you know, for some things, it might be taking you 24 hours to sell it all the way up to, you know, three or four years to figure out different things. But another octopus, um, you know, prediction is that, realistically i think in the next probably 10 years maybe that a lot of people especially in the renting market will probably have to house share so realistically if you've got three or four people living in the same house where previously they'd be living you know one one family or one person per house there'll be limited storage space so then you know obviously storage will be a premium you need to take that in consideration as well so like i was saying is that you really need to start um niching down i suppose would be the best put, way to put it um, and start looking for products that help, help higher sell through rates um, and obviously just you know go from there you'd have to store things as long and stay away from clothing <laughs> best bit thing that they skim all the good items off to sell them online so we get all the decent to bad stuff and all the really good stuff that you actually want to find is just not going to be there they put them in a different pile and then we really don't see skimming too much in Australia at the moment. Um, it is getting worse, I suppose, from that perspective. But we, you know, Salvation Army and Vinnies are doing a lot online. Um, they are selling to their platforms. A lot of people don't particularly like gravitating to all those platforms. But I think if this, when, as soon as they become, I suppose, a, a higher presence on eBay, um, you'll find it, it'll get a lot worse over here because people when they buy things on eBay, they don't necessarily look who the seller is. They won't say it's Vinnie's Australia or Salvo's Australia or stuff along the lines of that. What, but you know, on the flip side, if they go to vinnies.com.au or salvos.com.au, for example, um, and no different to, you know, probably the, the same in the States and the viewers over there is when they go to goodwill.com um, and they basically say, well, this is like a, a charity per se. I shouldn't be paying all these different expenses, all these different things. So that's what you've got to take into consideration. Once they get onto eBay, I think it's going to become increasingly harder from that perspective as well. Another like tractor trailer truck comes and picks it up and sends it to whatever warehouse for them to sell it online. We just cannot get it. Some Goodwills don't do that, but mine do. And it could just increase throughout the entire country. Same thing with other thrift stores. There is one thrift store near me that is not a Goodwill that does not skim. Everything that's donated is put out and it's very cheap prices, most of the time even cheaper than Goodwill. However, people line up about a half an hour before it opens every single day. By the time it opens, there's literally 50 plus people online they open the doors and people like actually sprint to the items like run so even if you want to have that 40 yard dash over to the shoes you have what 15 20 seconds to grab as many good shoes that you could see that you think could resell before all the other resellers take everything else and it's just barren and that goes with everything all the clothing all the shoes the knickknacks and it seems like it's just going to get more and more competitive so all these things you have to think about just changing up your routine your sourcing trips all of that it's but you know especially if you're a new reseller yeah you know, i'm not too sure who watches this channel uh, youtube doesn't really give me that indication but that doesn't seem enjoyable to me yeah and that's part of the reason why i went back to full-time in income uh, full-time employment for is because that it's becoming less and less enjoyable um yeah the thrill of the hunt all these different things i do yeah i suppose i'm a bit weird in the sense that i prefer listing i love listing um i don't really particularly like sourcing i don't particularly hate <laughs> photography with a passion um but like i'm saying is that 
really you're going to get to the point where you have to find an obscure niche um for example like skylanders or something along lines that even that becomes more and more you know saturated and popular you know that yeah thrift stores are catching on to these um but like you're saying is that your competition is going to become more and more fierce and that's why i was thinking that you know especially 2024 it's probably towards the end of the good time some people might contest that and they might argue otherwise and please by all means put it in the comment section below if you do is that i think that what i would do is i would be basically focusing on really high sell through items um things that you can sell quickly you know if you can pick up a pair of jeans like this gentleman for five dollars and sell them for twenty dollars uh, plus post you know cut the market by five dollars get them out make as much capital as you can and reinvest that capital into another business venture um <laughs> yeah obviously do your research and i'm not forcing you down i'm not giving you financial advice in that respect but like i say i think that especially in the next couple of years that re reselling is going to be you know a mass market adoption thing and realistically it's no longer viable it's not nearly as easy as it seems. And the last reason is what I've touched on in a previous video as well, but I think is, especially if you want to be a full-time reseller, is as important, if not more important than literally everything else, and that is your future. If you can't find enough inventory and get enough sales to go way over your means on like how much you spend every month for, you know, rent, mortgage, whatever, everything like that, you're not going to get ahead. There's no 401ks. There's no like job security, any of that kind of stuff. You have to store away a bunch of... And that, that, that is 110,000% correct is that that's what I was finding quite difficult in my respect is, you know, that if you look at a bell curve, um, so I don't have one here, <laughs> I've got prepared one earlier, but realistically, you know, unless you're in the really high percentile, maybe the, the top one or 2%, you're not going to make it as much as i hate to say you know i like to be opt opportunistic and i want to help everyone there is but it comes to the point where is that a lot of people romanticize about making lots of money they romanticize about making millions and millions of dollars you know youtubers say hey look this is not a quick rich screen get quick rich scheme it's not even to get a quick uh, get a rich in any capacity <laughs> it's a full-time job so realistically like i was saying is that probably you know as much as you know people load their full-time jobs and all these different things you know like case in point is that i've spoken to a few youtubers in the last couple of months that you know they, they release videos where they're basically trying to replace their full-time income to go full-time reselling or they were reselling full-time and you know they're saying how fantastic it is and how they hated their job and all these different things and they've disappeared off the face of the earth you know they've closed their ebay stores down they've closed their youtube channels down i've reached out to them on instagram to see if everything's okay if they have their tracking and and no response so like i was saying it's becoming more and more evident that reselling full-time is just a fantasy yeah if you like i said you're more than happy to contest otherwise you know, we're not going to say I'm, I'm completely right or completely wrong uh but just be need to be mindful is that before you make any life altering decisions take into consideration by all means if you have any type of leave if you've got holidays or long service leave or all these different things maybe do that for a couple of months just to see how you go reselling um because yeah like i said don't go into a flat money for yourself every single year so you need to make way more than say like the 30 40 50 thousand dollars it costs to just like survive in your area so you are talking probably six figures and then stowing all of that money into investments high yield savings accounts dividends all of that so you also need to learn a lot more finance which is kind of what i want to get into in this yeah, he talks a little bit about finance. Now, I'm going to skip forward a little bit because, like I said, I'm not here to tell you financial advice. And by all means, <laughs> like I said numerous times before, don't take financial advice from a, a reselling octopus or you know anyone on YouTube for that matter. Um, yeah, hit up Ethan Rushok. Yeah, if you're in Australia, I highly recommend him. He's quite good and he's an accountant, so he could probably give you some better advice than anyone on YouTube can. Um, however, he makes a very valid point is that you know if you're only scraping by and a lot of people that are full-time reselling they barely scrape by um you know and i would have barely scraped by if my wife hadn't been you know a full-time breadwinner in that capacity but you need to be mindful of is that you know medical conditions medical uh, or your car breaking down all these different things could come into play and take you out of the reselling space for a certain period of time and ebay unless like i'm saying unless you've got something set up behind the scenes is that it's not going to it's not a generating income so you really have to push things in um, and push things out to get ebay working so as soon as you put it on time away mode your sales will stop your money will stop and all these different things so 
possibly look at reselling to offset, you know, I suppose debt. If you've got reselling, you know, if you've got debt, all those different things, don't go into debt to resell. <laughs> but if you've got credit cards, you got, um, you know, outstanding loans you want to take care of, probably use reselling to do that first and foremost. You know, like I said, not financial advice, but if I was to start again, this is what how I would play if it was in that situation. Um, yeah, take care of all those different things first, then start potentially using reselling to offset things. You know, if you have to live, at, you know, with Netflix and you, know, you need to pay $20 a month for Netflix or something along the that, pick up something with a $20 profit and then say, all right, this once this thing sells, that's Netflix for the month. Don't rely on it as a full-time income. Panel, just a little side note, just because I think it's very, you know, out of nowhere, just from zero to six months and you're just making six figures, that takes years of building up knowledge, years of skills, knowing the routes, building up connections with wholesalers or just other sellers in general. I mean, goodwills, all of that. So honestly, I think your best bet and... So with, with the connections, that could fall apart in an instant, right? So realistically, like I said before, is I, I had really good connections at my local thrift store, the Salvation Army. Um, then that manager moves to another store and that store is going completely trash now. Um, it was my favorite, <laughs> my favorite thrift store on my run, but now it's completely garbage. And where I used to go twice or three times a week, I barely go once a fortnight because it's the same stuff over and over again. Um, or likewise, that yeah, you might do something or someone else may come into the market and say, hey, look, I'll offer a dollar more than the octopus for, for all these things. So then, you know, then your contacts, you know, either going to cost you more or you've obviously pushed aside by someone else. Um, but like I was saying, always look for new opportunities. Don't don't sit on your tentacles and just wait for things to come to you. Um, don't watch YouTube <laughs> for inspiration per se, um, because like I was saying, once it becomes public, the, the ship's more often not sailed. So, Even my best bet, if, if I could figure out something else to do, is to do the thrifting stuff part-time. I've ended up finding better stuff when I'm out with my girlfriend going, you know, during the weekend we go somewhere and we're near Goodwill and we hit a Goodwill for 20 minutes. I find more stuff at like those kind of little stops randomly throughout the day than getting up at 8.30 in the morning, going to every single Goodwill for like five, six hours, going home and doing the same thing over and over and over day after day. If you have some sort of part-time or full-time job and you want to do this on the side, that's 100% my recommendation. Honestly, it's what I want to do. But if you really do want to be a full-time reseller, even if you don't have too much knowledge about it right now, I'm not going to stop you. I just wanted to give you some advice from somebody who's been doing this for quite a while now. Yeah, this guy yeah, spotted the money from that respect. Yeah, like, oh, I would tend to agree. If, you know, like I've said before, if you don't like your job, you hate your job, um, you, know, you want to go full-time reselling because you want to escape the nine-to-five grind and all those different things, find something you enjoy. You know, like if you have to take a, you know, a five-grand pay cut or a ten-grand pay cut to do something you enjoy, you know, use reselling to top yourself up from that perspective if you need to. But realistically, keep your employment, especially over the next couple of years, um, the state of the economy, you know, obviously maybe potentially use reselling to, you know, to build a nest egg if you need to go down that path. But realistically, please, 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 please do not, <laughs> you know, do not on the whim jump across to you know, full-time reselling because you don't like your job. On seeing how much more difficult it's become. So if you want to see anything else on this channel, leave it in the comments below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and I'll talk to you guys later. So I did not. Ooh, ooh. Back to the start. So basically, I will um, put Zach's uh, details in the in the comment section below. But but please, you know, like if you do enjoy that. But like I was saying before, is that yeah, just make sure that you, you do your due diligence. Yeah, do your little bit of research, all these different things, even into drop shipping. Like I said, that potentially, you know, it is quite saturated. However. You know, it's not a bad place to, you know, to look at building a business from that perspective for very short term business. Um, but anyway, that's enough for me today. Uh, but if you liked it, please, by all means, you know, put a comment down the, down the uh, comment section below, even though I've told you 800 times already. Um, give the video a like, uh, give it a sub. And by all means, uh, if you could please slither over to uh, Grumpy Granny's channel, I'll put her details in the description field as well. Uh, she hasn't been feeling very well. Um, so I'd love to give her a bit of um, a bit of, bit of a respite from <laughs> a bit of YouTube and get some more people on across to her channel. But anyway, that's enough for me. We'll catch you next time. Bye.